Hey, White Sox fans, guess what? The new season's here. Happy 2022. We got a big group to welcome you to White Sox baseball. Uh, an incredible slate of stories we're going to have all season long for you on Southside Sox. Thanks for joining us here. Uh, we are just mere minutes away, maybe just mere hours away. Maybe the game's already over and you're listening to this now because you're a weirdo. You want to see what we said before the game. Well, you're going to get a chance to listen to what we have to say after the game as well. We'll have a post-game podcast as well. This is number five pregame podcast, second of this season. The first, oh, geez, it was just a month ago and it seems like it went by in a snap, but we're here now. The fake season's over. This is the real season. Detroit Tigers are going to be the first victim here. Uh, what is it about uh, noontime, Chicago time? Oh, yeah, it's coming right up. It's coming right up. Okay, we've got a big group of people to talk to. We're going to go around once just so everybody can associate voices and names and so on. So the first thing I'm going to throw out to the group, prepare your answers. Uh, I just want to know something you're really pleased by from this spring training going into the season. What's something that's making you really happy about the Chicago White Sox up in the left corner to block representing the Indianapolis field office and Churro Baker. It's Crystal O'Keefe. Crystal, tell me, give me some happy news about the Chicago White Sox. Oh gosh, you're making me go first. Um, I am very happy that Lucas Giolito looks wonderful already and I think he's going to have a great season and hopefully win all of the awards I like that I like that you could have uh, just so everybody knows you can pass I might not come back to you but you can't pass hey look at this it's regular season Trevor Lines still has not eaten a churro but he is here for the podcast I think there's a connection to be made here between Crystal and Trevor Trevor welcome back first of all and second of all just give me something you're psyched about because you've been putting out some pretty good tweets, pretty inspiring tweets. I mean, it's nice to follow. It's getting me sort of psyched for the season. See, I got my jersey. So give me some, just give me the top thing that's making you happy. Yeah, Crystal with the churros and also with Giolito. That is actually what I was going to say as well. Um, I don't know if everyone saw that picture of Giolito and Michael Kopech next to each other, but Giolito looks like an absolute beast. Apparently, he's put on some really good weight, really good strength, and um, I'm excited to see where his velocity sits. Um, I think last year was a little bit good for him, uh, having to deal with the sticky stuff ban and trying to reinvent himself a little bit, implementing his slider a little bit more. Um, and if he can consistently sit in the mid-90s, um, I think that's going to do wonders for his secondary stuff as well as a little bit more swing and miss on the fastball. So I'm, I predicted him as my Cy Young in our little predictions piece. So I'm super excited to see Lucas on the bump tomorrow. Vested interest. You got to like that. Um, okay. Uh, here she is. She's, she's, she's been, I think she was on the previous pregame podcast. She's just everywhere. She's everywhere on Southside Sox new, but everywhere. It's Christina Erdo. Welcome Christina. And please give me something that's making you happy. Don't say Lucas Gilito. This is getting boring. You can say churros. Although I don't think, did you just admit you have had a, you've never had a churro as well? No, I said I wanted to make them tomorrow. Oh, okay. Very smart. <laughs> um, Very smart. But yeah, I don't know. There was a lot of good things that came out. Um, I'm really excited that we have AJ Pollock. I, I'm really pleased by that, that we addressed right field. Um, excited to see him lead off tomorrow and place a TA. That should be um, hopefully really good. Um, another thing, I, Aloy has kind of been raking in spring training. So I'm hoping that he kind of just transitions that right in the season and gets off to a hot start. Uh, same with Luis. I'm just excited to see them, you know, actually start the year and hopefully finish it as well. So um, yeah, I'm just glad we made some, um, you know, moves and addressed some pieces that needed to be addressed. So excited to just get the game going, honestly. Okay. It's, I mean, we're just minutes away. It's very, very exciting, Christina. Uh, no, we did not talk to each other before this podcast, although who knows? You, I won't tell you whether or not we did. Yes, it is my, it is my twin. Uh, and the other half of the Indianapolis field office is Joe Reese's. You've actually read by now you've read if not, go read it. You can pause, go read it. His like prediction is like his sort of fanfic prediction. It's like, you know, he does this every year. It's awesome. It's the Joe Reese's prediction of how things are going to go. Now, granted, it's not the best ending for the White Sox, but anyway, going into the season before you're wrong about how they'll fall short of winning the World Series, Joe, tell me something you got just psyched about the White Sox this year. I'm very psyched about Eloy Jimenez. Um, not only did he survive spring training this year, but he also played very well. And he did so against 
relatively strong spring training competition. Uh, a lot of times numbers in spring training are artificially boosted from having a lot of like, um, opponents who are working through the low and mid tier minor leagues. But um, Jimenez had a lot of good competition, uh, you know, that he raked against. And you know, step one, of course, was just surviving spring training. And he did more than that. And I think that you know, it, it, obviously he's had some trouble staying on the field. Of course, there was the big injury last year. And even when he came back from it, he was essentially a league average hitter last year. Um, you know, if he can continue this positive momentum from spring training into the season, that would be big for the White Sox. Joe, Christine, I'm going to just keep the Eloy uh, train going because you stole my answer. He's alive. He's He is alive. He survives spring training. That's what's making me really happy, among many other things. Zach Hayes, please lay it on me. What's making you psyched about the White Sox? Most psyched going into opening day. Again, just mere minutes away. Oh, man. Um, I'm pretty happy that Craig Kimberl is not on the team. And <laughs> they got the in, in the past. Uh I, I was really resigned to the fact that it was going to be Larry Garcia starting in right field or maybe Gavin Sheets or Andrew Vaughn come opening day and that uh, that particular wish was not going to be fulfilled. So it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to watching AJ Pollock because, you know, watching new players is always fun. It's something to look forward to. And I'm glad that we do have at least one major new bat in the lineup that we probably didn't think that we were getting that we can look forward to. And, you know, hopefully see some some quick results and get the angst down a little bit. I like that. I like that. Like sort of taking like a negative but turn into a positive. And it is exciting to see new players. And we're going to get to like the first batter. We're going to see our most exciting new player, new hitter. We actually got one and a new hitter. That's such a strange thing for an offseason, Zach. Uh, I'm going to take in the bottom left to block the smooth sounds, the calm sounds, the calming sounds, but yet the inspiring sounds of Adrian Serrano. Lay something on me, Adrian. What you psyched about? Um quality catching for every game um to get a top 10 framer last year in reese mcguire to you know uh, come in and spell uh yaz uh yasmani from time to time uh maybe we'll see yaz, yaz more at uh you know dh you know once a week or so um just because there's an actual major league not only a major leaguer behind the plate but an actual very good defensive uh, catcher behind the plate and I think it's going to help the pitching staff uh, throughout the year and they're going to need a little bit of extra help I think all right well um, Jackie Crestel crashed the podcast and now she's disappeared she was coming up next she stole in front of Trooper Galactus but instead I am going to I'm going to call an audible here I'm crossing sports even even into a sport I don't like and I'm going to call on Trooper Galactus Trooper, please give me something that maybe has got you most excited going into the season about the White Sox. Uh, I guess I'm actually happy to see, it. I, I, it, granted, it's not necessarily a good thing that Jake Berger's on the opening day roster because he's there because Moncada is injured, but it's good to see that Berger is ready. And Gavin Sheets looks like he's probably going to be uh, like our opening day gauge. And when those two were drafted first and second round in 2017, I think we all kind of imagined, all right, if everything goes right, these guys are going to be on the opening day roster and contributors in 2021, 2022. And that's happening. And that's a positive thing. Yeah, we probably won't see the same influx uh, this year of first rounders, uh, first time major leaguer first rounders, because I just don't think there are that many that they're uh, that the White Sox can throw out there. But yeah, it will be pretty exciting to see these guys and see if they can step up and participate in a way that maybe they tailed off. Uh, certainly Andrew Vaughn did last year. Okay, as we wait on Jackie, we'll maybe give her an opportunity still to throw out some good vibes because that's really what we need her for. That's what we pay her for on these podcasts is the good vibes. Uh, let's throw something out. Let's take a turn before we take a break. Let's take a turn. Anybody just wants to shout something out, go on ahead. Uh, worries. Uh, negative things, things that do concern you going to the season. I think there's one real obvious one. So I imagine that's eight people's answers here or nine people, but uh, just give me some ideas of things maybe we should be concerned about, or maybe if you want to spin it positively, something, if the White Sox can overcome early, it's going to make you feel even better about how the season's going. I'm just going to say that Di Dallas Keuchel will have to still pitch this season. S simple, sweet, and <laughs> very true. <laughs> Dallas Keuchel, the runaway winner in uh, what we predict to be, as a staff, uh, 20 people and counting, 
as the worst pitcher on the team. In fact, I think at least one person hates Dallas Keuchel so much. He just said he'd be the worst player as well. So uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of skepticism toward Dallas Keuchel. Dallas, prove us wrong. And then you can lecture us. Go ahead, lecture us specifically. Southside Sox, lecture us. All right. Uh, besides Dallas Keuchel, assuming everybody else is checking that box, some other things I guess we're concerned about going into the season. Again, just about to start. I'm still concerned that uh, Leary Garcia is going to play more than 120 games. Um, it just feels like Danny Mendick on the team and then Makata being hurt and Danny Mendick still not playing in the field. Like you don't have a backup utility guy for ut utility guys. So like that just means they plan on having Leary out there in a lot of positions, a lot of days. And I think it's uh, unfortunate with how much other talent uh, they have sitting around. Yeah, I'll just throw out, uh, connected to that, you know, I'll throw out one of mine, and that is there's three first basemen on the roster. Not a lot of teams have three pretty much primary first basemen on the roster. The White Sox do. It is going to handcuff you a little bit. Uh, I guess that's why you can't carry a third catcher, because you have five or six or eight first basemen. Uh, other concerns uh, from the field? Oh, we took care of them. This is, good. This is going to be a good season. <laughs> I mean, Keep Dallas and Leary on the bench, and that's a World Series, buddy. Yeah, I agree with that. I think starting pitching, I think, is just a question mark for everybody. Um, you know, we have Giolito, we have Cease, and then they have the four and five situation of Vince Velasquez. We have Keuchel and maybe Raylo. I mean, I probably feel most comfortable with Raylo right now, um, just based on, like, last season, but I don't know. I mean, I guess we're riding with Vince Velasquez, which no one thought at the end of this last year that we would be saying that so uh, it's just a question mark for me but I mean I'm excited to see Giolito I think we do have a strong at least front half of the rotation so um, hopefully they're able to hold it down and our you know 9,000 relievers that we have on the bench as well <laughs> yeah, we win I, think I, I think I might be the only one in the fan base that isn't as worried about Dallas I don't I feel like Dallas like they're just going to score runs for Dallas they always score runs for Dallas I don't know what it is about him on the mound but uh, I think with a better catching situation like I won't be surprised if Dallas is you know 14 15 wins at the end of this year I don't know what his his own numbers will look like but I think they're going to do well with him out there <laughs> yeah he's going to get chipping he's going to like trying to bound off the mound to do all this food and plays and win another gold glove Adrian I see this is it the smooth sounds, calming, encouraging. Wow. Okay. A pro Dallas Keiko vote. Hey, Jackie Kressel, I'm going to just slam you back to back here with questions. And that is number one, something you're really excited about going into the season. And then maybe a concern that you have going into the season. Okay. Well, they're, um, they're both in the battery. So I'm excited that we finally do have some kind of um, some backup catching that's coming our way. Uh, with Reese. Um, I'm glad that the Zach Collins experiment is over. <laughs> Although I wish him well. I wish him well in his endeavors. Um, and, <laughs> and something that, uh, you know, that's a bummer. The pitching is a bummer, man. <laughs> um, literally, yeah. you're a bummer. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> So I, it was it sucked to lose Lance Lynn. I don't know what's going on with Michael Kopech. I know that they're taking it slow with him, but you know, I, I worry. I'm a worrier. I worry about Michael Kopech. Yeah, I mean he's going to be limited as is. I mean it'd be great to get him to 100 innings, but he's not going to get um, to get to 120 innings. He's not going to get 60 starts. So yeah, at some point he is going to have to build up enough to maybe not, you know. Call, just call him a, an opener. I mean, at, at some point, um, but, uh, Trevor, give me something that you're concerned about. I need to know what you're concerned about. I think going off of Jackie's point, um, it would be nice to have Kopech as kind of your X factor or your bonus as like a number four in the rotation. But now with Lance Lynn out, he's going to be critical. He's, he's your third starter. Um, and really he's never done it. He's never started in the major league. So he is more of a question mark than I think a lot of people are giving it credit for. Um, I would love to see him have immediate success and be able to take on that workload. Um, but the fact that the plan for him was to ramp him up slowly and maybe get him going, especially in the second half of the season, um, get him peaking at that time, that kind of is thrown out the window now that you're missing Lance Lynn. Um, especially with the schedule being heavily front loaded. Um, they're going to have a tough schedule over these next few months, um, as well as being shorthanded. 
Um, so I would, I would consider the first couple months, uh, if the results aren't necessarily there, don't necessarily panic, but um, hopefully things start clicking at the right time in the second half. Uh, Zach, Joe, any particular uh, concerns you want to voice or do you just fall in line with some of the many other concerns have already been expressed? Not too much to add beyond the, the concerns about the starting rotation. It just feels a little bit like a, it's a little bit 2019-esque in that if it seems like if one of their good players goes down to an injury, they're all of a sudden in a very difficult position. Not a lot of depth there. And yeah, that's already being tested with Lynn being out. Um, and so, yeah, it was just a little bit uh, on. Yeah, it was not a satisfactory um, off season for Rickon with regards to addressing the starting rotation needs. Um, and yeah, part of that is due to Keiko's um, inability to, you know, uh, to deliver a lot of quality innings like he was able to in his prime. Um, but yeah, that's not, that doesn't completely fall on uh, Keiko either. Like, yeah, that's part of the problem, but certainly not the entire problem. So yeah, hope, hopefully they prove me wrong and the Kopech is able to step up and they won't be in a very precarious state um, as the season goes on. Zach, I don't want to answer for you, but is the increased um, this, the increased strength of competition in the AL Central, I think namely the Twins and Detroit, um, but who knows who else, um, is that a concern going in or is that just for the naysayers and the fear mongers? Not, I don't think it's a concern so much as that they're going to really give them a hard charge for the division, but there's not going to be a lot of easy wins to go around, which is going to be annoying. It might stop them from, <laughs> from competing for one of those uh, <laughs> those top two seeds, which is much more important this year because you have the whole buy situation. Yeah. And yeah. We saw how that was kind of questionably handled at the end of last year in terms of prioritizing uh, home field uh, as opposed yeah. to rest and trying to make everything click at once in the playoffs. So uh, that's that's my, maybe my biggest concern right now. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's take a quick break. Uh, we're going to talk about some surprises. We're going to get a little bit as we inch closer to opening day, first pitch. Very, very exciting. You can feel it in this room. Nine separate rooms. You can feel it in these rooms. Uh, I'll take a break. Stick with us. There's more stuff to preview in our pregame podcast. Hang with us. Hey, White Sox fans, it is number five pregame podcast. I'm Brett Baldini, lucky enough to host this. I'm wearing a jersey, so you know I'm psyched for opening day. Just seconds away from first pitch uh happy you've joined us uh we've talked about things we're excited about going into the season disappointments concerns um stupid sort of topic i suppose but let's fill a little bit more time surprises what has surprised you maybe even across baseball hey, what is yes uh sorry but i know i dropped off there i do have a concern i don't think was addressed okay trooper uh, that i kind of wanted to get into uh yeah, sorry, everybody. <laughs> but um, I think one the biggest concern for this team isn't on the major league roster uh, because this roster stacks up against any team in the division. It stacks up against the best team in the American League relatively well. Every team is going to have injuries. Every team is going to be looking for reinforcements during the season as a result of that. Uh, and I think the biggest concern for the Sox is in player development. If they have another season in the minors, like they did last year where their best prospects all start falling flat in the lower minors and they don't get any value built up in their system, then they're really going to struggle to make key mid-season additions. We saw it in the offseason where other teams were picking up guys uh, in trades for not necessarily super elite prospects or anything, but the White Sox just, as we've discussed before, don't have the type of prospects that other teams want. And they need to de develop that internally this year if they want to be able to make the moves before the trade deadline that they're going to need to, to reinforce this roster. Makes sense. Let's hope it happens. Let's hope it comes together. Um, all right, uh, surprises. Things that have surprised you about uh, around the league, about the White Sox, uh, developments, good or bad, uh, anything jump out at you. And, and Dallas Keuchel has already been an answer, so we'll just skip that. And he's not a surprise. 
I'm a little surprised that the Guardians went out and spent some money this offseason with Ramirez. That was uh, that was fun when that came through from Jeff Passan. I'm like, oh, really? The guard the Guardians are trying to do some 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 here. Yeah. Um, a little jealous, to be honest with you. Another team falls off the list. What? Where they're now four teams that haven't handed out the uh, the nine figure contract. I think. Uh... Oh, man. What an it's, honor. What an it's honor. A proud group. That list, it's a right? proud, it's it's a proud a moment group. for us. Uh, okay. That disgusting surprise aside, other things jump out, good or bad. I will say, well, there are really two things. The Tigers, again, also built a really great team that I think are really going to give us a lot of challenges and be really good for a couple more years. But the other thing, I don't know if anyone else saw this, but poor Cabrian Hayes, before he could even sign his contract, went out of the game with a hand wrist injury, you know, securing his future, but that contract hadn't been signed because the physical was pending. Pending physical. Yeah. Oh my God. I just feel so bad for him. He just wanted to get that money. It was like $70 million. So I did read that it was minor, so hopefully everything still goes well. Yeah, hopefully. Um, I'm surprised surprised this uh, year that we've had not a lot of distractions from uh, our septuagenarian manager. (laughs) Um, We had the saving it for the regular season. Yeah, we had the one. We had the one. uh, You're not a real Sox fan moment, but uh, the only the only other thing that really has stood out to me from Tony this uh, spring is the. He refuses to use the term piggyback for the, uh, you know, the starting pitcher that's going to go short and then another long reliever. He's going to call it two cats and two dogs or something along those lines. And I don't understand what that means, but I like, I, I love it so much. And I think about it at least once every day since he said it. It's like a joke you can't get. You're not supposed to get. He's so (laughs) out of touch with all of us. It's like, we're not going to understand any of his jokes. I appreciate the effort, Tony. Okay. Other surprises, good or bad? I'm surprised that this uh, this payroll is as high as it is. I think they're close to $190 million. I did not see that coming. And I am even more surprised that somehow, despite a $190 million payroll, they did not really make a really major addition to the roster. Yeah. It's I, I don't even know if you told me before the off season that they were going to have a $190 million payroll, I would have assumed that one major off season addition, one big contract would have been handed out. And well, and we got Josh Harrison and Larry Garcia and yeah. traded for somebody else's right? So hooray. If every shot of him didn't show him wincing in pain, you could say that Yohan Moncada starting on the injured list would be a surprise. Uh, but coming out of the gate with one of your core guys, uh, arguably the most important player on the team, there's certainly people who think that way, uh, n- not active and not active anytime soon. It's not just a, a scratch or a mere a flesh wound. This is significant enough maybe to take him out perhaps for the month of uh, April uh, do we see with Jake Berger up, although everybody likes seeing Jake Berger up and he's such a great story and did relatively well and, you know, maybe not contact wise, but did relatively well, put the ball uh, uh, deep when he put it in play uh, in 2021. Uh, is this something that's actually going to be reeling from when they really, at this point, they cannot count on the rotation, maybe the pitching staff for the bullpen. They can't count on the rotation in the way they did at the start of 2021 the offense is going to have to carry this team in the first place at least to begin with until some guys get settled uh is Mankata not being available going to really throw an immediate um, um wrench in all the the machinery for the first time in a while i think they actually have the depth to deal with it reasonably well uh yeah um i mean in many years you know in, in the past a Moncada injury would have meant more than it does to the roster of 2022 but yeah i I, it doesn't really give me the sense that it'll really throw a wrench into their plans this year i was gonna say kind of the same thing i mean it felt like just last year you know we had so many people out just to start off the season and it didn't really have that much negative effect on the team we just had you know jose abreu killing off aloy but I mean, that was it. So I think they'll be fine. I don't, I like Jake Berger. So I don't think it's going to be as bad as 
a lot of the doom and gloomers out there think it will be. Well, and you hope the depth stick uh, um, plays out well. I mean, I, you could argue that, you know, they really got miracle performances, um, you know, last year. And I'm not sure we can count on that, but I, I hope we can. I hope Jake Berger comes up and does, you know, even better than he did last year. Yeah, obviously Mankata missing is going to affect them just because it's a guy that takes a lot of pitches. He's on base a lot, <laughs> you know, he's on base more than, you know, your leadoff hitter was last year. Um, so it's going to make a difference, but I think they have a lot of opportunity to, you know, have some guys step up and overcome it. Um, I don't know how much of Berger we're actually going to see. It's nice that he's going to get the start, um, you know, in the, the opener and maybe the second game. And then I imagine that they're going to have uh, Larry slide over there once Tim's back. Um and um, so, you know, it's up to Berger to take advantage of this and really show out if he comes out with, you know, you know, three or four hits and, a, you know, an RBI or Homer or something in the first two games, maybe he buys himself some more playing time a la uh, your mean last year. Yeah, I'm I'm interested to see what they do kind of going off Adrian's point um, against right handed pitching uh, to see if Berger is still getting those starts over at third base. I know we've all talked about it, how the Sox mash lefties and sometimes struggle against good right-handed pitching. And even in the minor leagues last year, Berger was a guy with heavy platoon splits where he was crushing lefties and uh, struggled a little bit against right-handed pitching. So it's, it'll be interesting to see if they shift Leary over to third just to get that more balanced lineup. Um, so I'm interested to see what happens there. And to, to follow up, Trevor, Trevor stole my thunder there. But, uh, yeah, when, when you're relying on Leary for uh, lineup balance, you know you're in trouble. Uh, this, this was already a dangerously right-handed heavy lineup, and Mankata along with Grandal are like the two known left-handed threats, and we kind of think Sheets will be. And without Mankata, like, we're, we're really lacking uh, a good left, like, good left-handed presence throughout the lineup. I was going to say, too, it might be a little bit more sticky than we thought. Sorry to be doom and gloom, <laughs> but like it might be a little bit more sticky than we thought just because the front end of the schedule is is tough. Uh, the month of May is not going to be kind to us if we don't have all of our starters in there. Um, but they made Jake Berger prove me wrong. OK, we're doing a speed round question. Give you a second to prepare. All right. We're not counting Lance Lynn, even though he's injured and who knows how good he's going to be this year. Luke's Giolito, Dylan Cease, Michael Kolpak. We'll round him up. We'll say he's going to get past that second inning. He's going to get into the third inning and maybe even to the fourth inning early in April. And it'll be fifth, sixth inning the rest of the season. Aside from those core four, I want to know who, as a starting pitcher, as a player in this rotation, uh, is going to impress us the most. Who's going to be the biggest surprise? I guess you can punt and say nobody. But uh, who's going to be the biggest surprise among the available starters? Let's reverse it. We're going to start with Trooper Galactus. Give me the name, Trooper. I'll go with Lopez. Uh, he's he's been durable in his career. He's kind of had a uh, you know anytime anywhere attitude that he's brought to uh, both the rotation and the bullpen. Uh, and he he was pretty good last year, all things considered. For a guy who really very evenly split his time between the bullpen and the rotation, and uh, I think that he's I think he's figured out enough to where he can at least make it work at the major league level uh, in whatever role they need him in. Uh, good vibes, Jackie Crystal. What's it going to be? I think by default I have to go with Dallas Keuchel because he has nowhere to go but up. <laughs> and he's a veteran and he always reminds us fair fair choice hey, uh, adrian. Man. adrian who you got um i already spoke about dallas earlier so i'm gonna go with uh <laughs> johnny cueto in the shimmy <laughs> johnny cueto so he will actually see the south side chicago mm, i mean if right. he if he if he pitches one game well like he's doing better than i was expecting him to sure. so like boom. fair enough fair enough okay zach hayes who you got yeah, I'm unexcited enough by the pitchers that I have seen that I'm going to go with the ones that I haven't, which is mostly Cueto and uh, whatever combination of Jimmy Lambert and Jonathan Stever and will wind up being the depth in Charlotte. I know Stever is hurt right now, but uh, yeah, ideally ideally one of them will step up because I, I suspect that Vince Velasquez and Dallas will probably not be those people. Zach Hayes with the Emilio Vargas vote. I like it. Joe Reese is who you got. Um, I'm, 
I like the logic of since the expectations for Keichel are so low, I, I could pick him. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I think I'm going to actually pick someone who I think could be a productive player. And yeah, I, I think I like Lopez for that. Um, and yeah, I don't have super high expectations for him, but I do think he has the best chance of being like a surprise sort of breakout candidate who, um, you know, most people don't really see coming, you know, around the league. Um, I think if it were to be anyone, I say, yeah, why not, Lopez? We need Die Billick back to sing us the Dallas Keuchel is trash song. Die, come back to us. Well, she'll be back. Another week. Another week she's off. She's doing some filming or whatever. She'll be back. She's our Saturday recapper. Uh, Christina Erdo, what, uh, Erdo, what do we got uh, for best of the worst? I don't know what we're calling this. Yeah, um, I I mean, I would definitely agree with Raylo. I, I think definitely feel the most secure with him just based off last year. I mean, he was like mid fours, I think, ERA, which isn't too bad um, and had some good outings. But I mean, I'm kind of on the same page with Keuchel, but Velas- Velasquez, like his floor is really low. So, I mean, hopefully we can maybe get a, a few quality starts out of that, even if it's just four innings or something. I mean, because we have the bullpen. So hopefully if they can just put us in a spot and our offense can, you know, cover on the other side, then, you know, we just need any, we just need someone to get some quality innings really. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to Vince, let's do it. Okay. Double V's. Uh, Trevor, we got. Yeah, I think similar to what everyone has said, if we're looking for the safest pick, the safest floor, um, definitely Reynaldo Lopez. Uh, we kind of know what we're getting for the most part with him. It's not going to be anything crazy. Um, but if we're going for ceiling, I'm going to go with Vince Velasquez, uh, kind of a Ethan Katz reclamation project. Uh, you never know what he's going to be able to do with him. He's a guy that has been known to have better stuff than his results and sometimes doesn't know where the ball is going. But if, if cats can fix him, uh, I think he has the highest ceiling. So I'll, I'll go with Velasquez. All right. A charity vote for double V. Uh, Crystal O'Keefe, who you got? I am going with LASIK Lopez. <laughs> That's fair. I think, I think he did. I think he did pretty decent last year. You know, after now that he can actually see the catcher, I I think he can only improve from that. And I put my trust in him. I'm a Raylo Stan. That is three, uh, four, three ERA last year for Lopez. Yeah. yeah was super off. So thank you. Something to build. Uh, well, but, but in the right direction, at least. Uh, that was uh, last vote came from six pack author on opening day, Crystal O'Keefe. We also have the bird app recap. You don't know what that is? Well, you'll find out what that is. It's the bird app recap. That's Adrian Serrano for opening day. Yours truly lucky enough. He's just a bully. He gets a bully his way into opening day assignment. So I'll be doing the recap for opening day. Uh, And because this is our pregame podcast again game just minutes away stick with us the game hasn't started yet it's all that introduction stuff you don't want to see every detroit tiger getting introduced you do not need that noise that's bad for your health uh let's run through basically quickly what our schedule is this year we got expanded coverage this year at Southside side we're doing basically playoff coverage for the regular season uh recapper oh my goodness it's good vibes on sundays the recapper jackie crestel uh, see, I'm I'm referring off of I'm high tech here with my notebook. Uh, Monday wild card, Zach Hayes squeezes way in there uh, here and there. Joe Reese's Tuesdays, Hannah Lamata Wednesdays, Christina Erdo Thursdays, Ashley Sanders the Spirit Captain Fridays, and Di Billick probably with a song each recap will be our Saturday recap for six packs. Ashley takes Sunday. Darren Black or uh, Darren uh, Brown. Darren Brown, not Darren Black, uh, doing Mondays. Crystal O'Keefe taking Tuesdays. Oh, and Saturdays. Uh, uh, Zach Hayes, he's, he's everywhere. <laughs> you can't, you, you never know what type of story you're going to get from Zach. He's doing Wednesdays. We got a, a couple open spots there. Miners is full. Darren Black, he does all the days except Joe steals Wednesdays from him. And of course, the delightful Judy Brady relocated from Winston-Salem back in the Chicago White Sox uh, viewing area is taking Thursdays and Fridays. She's hard at work uh, tonight on uh, tonight's uh, Friday minor league update. Uh, the bird, uh, the bird app recap. Adrian takes Fridays. Good vibes Thursdays. Christina 
again, she's everywhere too. Uh, she's taking Tuesdays. We've got some next day column action. Of course, Sox Optimist. He's doing Sundays for us. Uh, Jeremy Carl's doing Mondays. Uh, Jason Canander just came out of nowhere. He's taking Tuesdays. He's back with us. Going to do some Tuesday action. Zach Hayes, again, you cannot keep up with him. Fridays, Adrian Serrano, and in the week, hopefully on good notes every time, doing our Saturday day of game column. Uh, that's what we got coming up for you. We got more. I mean, really, I say it every time. We got more coverage than you possibly know what to do with. Don't get scared. Don't run away. Don't turn us off. Just keep clicking on new stories. I think we've had 50 this week. We won't have 50 every week, but we're probably at this point getting about a half a dozen stories to you per day, which is preposterous. Me and Crystal and, and Joe and some of us carrying some of the, the heaviest pieces for this site. Uh, we might collapse, but we're going to try to stay strong for you. We're going to keep our shoulders strong. Indianapolis field office, come on. Let's uh, form the, I don't know, take the form of a bucket of water, or whatever the Wonder Twins do. Wonder Twins, Indianapolis, thanks for the help you've been doing. Thanks everybody for this participation in this podcast. We are now probably just a few seconds away from first pitch. Go shut this off. Go watch the ball game. Come see us at Southside Sox afterwards. We're going to have a post-game podcast and tons of coverage, again, that you don't even know what to do with. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining me here. And thanks always for reading, listening, and even watching.